All right, so continuing on the boot here. Now, I, <clears throat> I used a, my own map here, but again, if you want, you can use any of the leather materials that are found in substance under materials um, as a starting point. So, you know, I kind of did some searching for boots and I actually ran into this boot, the actual boot that my model here is based on. And it's this one right here. It's by Tactical Research called the Kyber. Um, and they come in different colors. So we have this here, which is just black. Um, you know, not very interesting. We have sort of black shiny leather and then sort of cloth like parts just like we suspected. There's also this dark brown one. This one is a lot has more texture to it in the more in the leather parts. So you can see what's going on in there now. I don't know if I'm going to do all this inner stitching and what have you here. Um, again, it's not, it's not really worth the effort, given that the character would probably be wearing pants that hang over the top of that. So it's not something I'd ever see. And given the limited time frame, you don't want to spend time doing stuff that's not really important. Uh, and then this is the tan version. So notice all the stitching. There's, there's stitching going on there, double stitch. So that's all stuff that we got to put in as well. Uh, I think that'll just add to the believability of it. Um, I guess here's another one. It's a really small image, but... So there's different ways that we can really go about doing this. Okay, so let's, I'm thinking sort of a dark brown leather. Um, I think black is it's a little boring to me, so I want to just jazz it up a little bit and make it a little, little uh, darker. So the leather that I have on there is this very beige leather. Now, I don't really want the shoe to be beige. Um, so what I can do is color correct this beige down to a much darker uh, color. Um, so I'm just going to rename this fill layer that we made here. I'm going to call this uh, sort of base leather. Okay, so I'm going to... Now we already did a roughness on here to up the shininess of it a little bit. Um... So, and that was using a level. So I'm going to put another levels on here. So we're going to add levels. This time we're going to have it work on the base color, right? So you have you have all these you can pick from, but we want base color. And what we're going to do is just play with some of these here and see what we can do. So probably not that. Okay, here we go. So we can start to darken the leather. So I might, I might want it pretty dark. You know, you can take it all the way to black, but I, I think that's a little boring. So let's let's make it just a really dark brown. Close to black, but not quite. Okay, so something like that. And you can see now that roughness. You can see the shine that it has to it. Um, again, if you wanted to adjust that, you can make it more or less matte. So maybe something like that. Probably, you know, you don't want it to be too shiny. So we can adjust the, the, the levels on different channels. So depending on what you pick here. So I think I like that. I think I like that. So since the last video, I've kind of decided that this part here can be a whole separate um, texture, shader. So 
Um, let's, so we need to adjust that. We have one for the leather and one for like the cloth texture. Uh, we need to mask another one. So let's see, where did I put that into? I think I included that as part of the cloth. So what I'm going to do here is in the cloth, I'm just going to, I don't know, just pick something, something bright color. I take this weird plastic and I'm going to click on my mask here for the cloth. I'm going to hit four on the keyboard or just press this button right here, polygon fill. I'm going to select my UV chunk fill here. I'm going to set this to zero and I'm going to click on, there we go, drag and select, drag a selection there. That's going to remove that from this mask. Okay, then I'm going to make a new folder and put a black mask on it. And I can take this plastic and now move it there and then hit four again. Well, select the, the mask, hit four, and we're going to make sure we're at one. And we're going to click on that now that is here. Um, and I don't know what you call this. We'll just call this top part. I'm not really sure what it's called. So we can now get rid of this plastic just by hitting the, the trash can or hit the delete key and this is going to be a lot more shiny um, sort of different kind of, of leather texture so you know why not just use one of the ones that is here leather medium grain leather rough leather soft grain let's try leather soft grain I'm gonna put that on the top part so we have that let's see what happens if we come up here to scale and let's do five i don't know something like that i think it might be a little and i want to drop the roughness i want this to be a little more shiny now you don't want to take it all the way because that becomes fully reflective um somewhere here and then we can darken this So I don't know. Let's um let's see what color we want here. Make it pretty dark. And maybe raise the roughness just a hair. You know, you, you could you can come up with a whatever color it is that you like for this. Um the texture might be a little strong here, so what I can do is just go here go to add levels and go in height and let's see if we can just lower we don't want to completely decimate it but we want we want something to be left in here so again let's there's some texture we just bring it way down something like that and we'll call that good Okay, just to change it up a little bit. Okay. Um, for the cloth, let's just make it simple and use something that is available in Substance. So, I don't know. Let's, this is more about the texture of the embroidery. And it's kind of hard to see in the little preview here. So what we can do is just drag it the, this up here. And that's what we get. And then if we increase the tiling. I don't know. Do I like that one? Let's try fabric baseball hat. Let's see what that looks like. I'm just going to put it above the other one. So it's just going to override it. And I'm going to turn off that one because you can see the, the uh, height information comes through. So I'm just going to turn it off. And this one is not honestly not doing much. I mean, I guess it's not too bad, but let's um well, let's see what it looks like if we make it more brown. Let's go down here. Let's desaturate a little bit. All right, so well, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all, actually. 
All right, so I'm going to leave. I'm just going to hide that one and let's bring back the other one and see what we can do with that one and see which one we like better. So let's let's reduce the tiling here. Oh, you know what? That was the wrong one. Let's go into this fabric rough aligned here and go down to say five. You know, it's going to give us quite a bit of texture here. And same thing here. Let's just see color wise. If we can bring down and drop some saturation, you know, that kind of works too. I kind of, so let's go back and forth. You know, it comes down to, do you like the stripes or do you like oh, wrong one. the, oh, this one here and you know, that's entirely up to you. Um, you can even combine them, I guess. You know, to make a somewhat unique texture. So it's a combination of the two. Um, and but I think I like the the other one's color. Yeah, I like that color better. So what I can do is come up here and just turn off color. And it'll keep the, the height and turn off metal because we don't need any metallic. I think I'll we'll turn normal on here. I don't know if that's going to do anything. but Okay, so I kind of like what we're getting there. All right. So... Say we like that. And if you make sure you save, by the way. Um, and you, yeah, there we go. If you hit this little camera here, this will turn on the iRay renderer. So I'm going to hit it and give it a second here to spin up. And it's going to render this with the lighting. So you have a better idea of what that looks like. And it's got an IPR renderer just like Arnold does. Okay, so it's just it's just rendered. I mean, you'll you'll see that the viewport is a pretty good approximation of what's going on. So you don't really need to render, but it, it kind of helps too, just to see. Okay, so we have sort of the base colors for this upper part of the shoe here. Uh, obviously, it's all very clean right now. There's some variation in color here, just because that leather that I used had variation in color, which is good. Um, so let's, let's put some wear and tear on this and any, any work that we do here will then be copied over to the other side. All right. So let's put a little bit of wear and tear. Um, I'm going to start with the leather section. So I'm going to come here to the leather folder. Here's my leather. Uh, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to duplicate this. So select this base leather, control D to duplicate it. Um, and we'll call this <clears throat> worn leather. So basically what this is going to be, where, where the shoe is all scratched and scuffed up, it's going to show this worn leather. So we're going to adjust these this uh, base color. And we're going to bring it back up. Let me see here. Uh, let's just brighten it, I guess, you know, something like that. I'm just going to brighten this. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a mask to where you can only see this brighter leather in the scratches in the dark leather. Okay. So quick way to do that. Again, I'm, I'm trying to use as much substance built in stuff as possible, but obviously if you have custom maps and masks and things like that, you, you have more control. But under smart masks, there is one here called, uh, what's it called? Stains and scratches, that one right there. If you just drag that onto this worn leather layer and just give it a second, you see what happens right away. You see how it ap applies scratches and it, you see, we see mostly the dark base leather. But where the scratches are, where the damage is, we see the worn leather.
because it's using a mask to do that. See, if I turn off the mask, it goes back to just the base leather. If I turn it on, now it's looking like a worn shoe. You know, that was pretty simple, pretty quick to do. Okay, so that's all I've done there is just put a mask on that on that lighter one so that it is only shown where the wear would be on the base leather. Okay, you got to think about it like, um, you know, if you've got car paint, for example, and you scratch the car paint and you see the raw metal underneath, it's kind of what we're going for here, but leather's a little bit different. It's it's more where the leather has been scuffed away. So if you, if you assume that this darker leather was sort of polished and, and looking good, and then over time, you know, wearing the boot from the bending of the leather as well as just, just being scratched, you get the much lighter uh, unpolished leather underneath. So what I'm going to do here, and notice every time you see this orange line, it means there are things underneath that. So if I click on the mask, it's going to show you the things that are under the mask. And if I click on the actual layer, it's going to show me the things that are under that. So uh, if I come to roughness on this worn leather, and what I can do is make it less shiny, right? Because this is the stuff that's not been polished. This is the stuff underneath, and it does not very shiny. So you don't want it to be all super shiny like that. You want it to be pretty matte. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and add... Select my mask here again. I mean, there's another subtle, it's called subtle scratches. And I'm going to add this one on top of that. So just drag it onto that mask again. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to replace the other one, right? So what I do here is we have blending modes here. So just like in Photoshop, if you use blending modes, I'm going to try the different ones here. Let's try multiply. Okay, let's see what that does. Then you can turn them on and off just to see the effect. Um, what you want to be careful of is going too far with your damage. Maybe I don't like multiply. Let's try add kind of and you can turn it on and off. You see it sort of adds the damage on top of what we had before, which for some reason now let me just see here. Okay, because there's a sharpen filter on there. So that all came with that subtle scratches. So what if I delete that sharpen filter because it's over damaging my shoe. So with the masks, these are called generators. Okay, these just help generate the mask for whatever you have there. So I'm going to turn this back on here. And then here where the 100 is, is it's just like a layer in Photoshop. It's the opacity of the layer. So if I drop this down, you can see that I can just drop it to zero and the effect goes away. So you can adjust it there because you don't want the shoe's been worn quite a bit. You don't want it to be perfect, but you don't want to overdo it either. And then also, <clears throat> if you pick one of these generators, you get a whole bunch of uh, settings within that generator. So you can invert it if you want, uh, which I don't want to do. The wear level is how much wear you have. So, you know, find a happy medium there. Uh, let's do the other one as well. Give it a sec. Um, there's texture values here. You can see you can decrease and increase the texture. Uh, so for me, what I found works is just play with it and see what, what you get. Um, that's kind of how I figure out what I like, what I don't like. So that's the curvature. Um, mess with them in occlusion and so on. So just come on in here and just play with it. Play with it, see what you have, what you what you come up with. Okay, so I think let's see. Let's turn this one down a little bit. So it's not so crazy. Okay, so that's not bad. We're off to a pretty good start here. Um What I'm getting here is this, it might be a little too much and too even 
how it's worn away at the edges here. So what you can also do is just come in here and add a paint layer. Okay. And what that'll do, I'm just getting my tablet here. I have a Cintiq, but I like the resolution of this screen, so I just use a uh, I just use a uh, standard drawing tablet here. Um, so what I'm going to do here in the paint layer, I can adjust the mask by painting it myself. So I can come in here to brushes. And you got all these different brushes that do different things. The ones I use the most are Dirt 1 and Dirt 2. Uh, these just work really well. So let's start with Dirt 2. You can see the brush is this sort of random splatter. And if I, if I paint with it, you can see I can sort of paint away the mask. And if I hit X, I can add to it. And because my flow is at 50, it's not 100%. See, if I put it at 100% and start painting... Um, and then also what I have here is a size jitter, which is going to randomly increase and decrease the size. Uh, I have an angle jitter, so it's going to rotate it randomly. Um, so let's see what we have here. Oh, I have lazy mouse turned on. I'm just going to turn that off. So I can then, you know, I can start to paint this back. So um, I actually want the flow to be a little bit low there. So I can just sort of wear away if I hit X again to make it remove stuff. Uh, oh, I got to adjust my stroke opacity a little bit so you can see. So let's bring this down and then to adjust the size of the brush is control and using your mouse control and right click left and right dragging it increases or decreases it. If you go up and down it adjusts the sort of strength of the brush okay and then uh, let's see control and left mouse button you'll see that adjust the flow so control left mouse button increases the flow if you go left and right and if you go control left mouse button up and down changes the angle so it rotates as you can see on the right side of the screen there okay so um, those are kind of some of the shortcuts. You can just punch in the stuff too. So you can now because my tablet has touch sensitivity. If I press lightly, it does a very thin stroke, right? And if I press harder, then I get the full brush. So if you don't want to overpaint, you can drop the opacity and the flow, and then press hard. You can just sort of wear away at this. you know without so much strength to it and I'm gonna hit X just to add here and what I want to do is maybe start to paint back some of these worn edges here so that it's not so perfectly worn okay like over here Let's just bring back a little bit of this here Okay, so it's not just perfect. Okay, you got to be real careful. Sometimes it substance will overdo it. So you got to be able to go back in there and uh, let me hit X. And again, let's drop the flow. Oops, got to press harder. Okay. Now the top of the boot tends to tends to wear away the most, at least from what I've seen. So I'm going to start to just paint this back a little bit. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. And of course, because the paint layer has its own... Uh, opacity slider here oh did I delete that one sec there we go you could increase or decrease it so you don't need to keep it at 100% so what I'll do sometimes I'll just paint it at 100 and let's just wear away some of this here you want to be as 
and random as you can it's hard to be random but you want to be as sort of random as you can so we're just we're just beating up this leather a little bit here okay Maybe not so much there. Just hit X to re reverse the brush. And you can start to build stuff back up. Okay. Maybe a little bit here. And some over here. Notice I'm not going all the way to the edges in some of these. I'm just doing in the middle. Okay, so we have now. It looks like it looks like I did not add this to the cloth section. So I must have messed up there. So let's uh, da -da -da -da. let's take this out of the leather. So select the mask on the leather folder and hit 4 and we want to set this to 0 and we want to oh I see what happened so it looks like my UVs are oh what am I doing here let's go back to 4 I'm gonna hit F3 oops and figure out where that part is it's one of these two. No, my UVs are separate. So I'm going to hit F1 to show both. And if I click there, for some reason, it's, it's including this guy. So I'm going to do it here in the UV view. I'm going to hit X to invert that. Or actually, no, I inverted the wrong one. It's that one I want. I'm going to hit X and remove that one. And then come to cloth here. And we're going to hit X to go to one and we want to add that to the cloth okay so now that's cloth um, that's a really nice feature in substance that you can do that and then I just hit F2 to just show me the um, the 3d view okay so you know we, we've sort of beaten up the leather a little bit but I think it's a little too strong so what I'm gonna do is come up here to my paint layer and then I'm gonna drop this down a bit. So it's 49, let's see. There we go, something like that. Okay. So you know as I go through this, by the way I have not pre-planned this texture. This is me just going into substance and seeing what we can come up with. Um, I'm thinking maybe having this front toe piece here a different ma a material than the main leather, and then also making this back piece the same as the toe piece. Just to let's just take it a little bit further. So again, I'm going to make a new folder. So make a new folder right there, and we're going to call this Toe and Heel, okay? And again, I'm just going to come to Materials here and just get something bright and shiny, like this plastic fabric, and put it in that folder. And that's really weird, but it's just temporary. And what I'm going to do is add, select the folder, add a, let's do a black mask. So it's going to remove that yellow because black makes everything transparent. And we're going to hit 4 to enter that mode. And we are going to make sure we're at 1. And we're going to click on the toe and the heel. And that's it. And then, of course, we need to remove the toe and the heel from the original leather folder. So 
in order to be able to actually see. Um, what I can do is then come down here and remove it. Uh, so select that mask, go to zero, and click on this. It goes away. Now you know there there's there's a good reason to leave it in there, and the reason is it's going to maintain. Right now, without that, it's gone back to being perfectly smooth. So if I do leave it in there, so let's go ahead and just put it back real fast. So I'm going to set this to one and click on there. I get all this height detail. So what I can do then is now when I come to here, let's turn this on. You can see all that height detail still there. Okay. Um, and that's entirely up to how you want to do it. You can do that or the conversely, the other way I could do it is, is to remove it from here. So let's go to this mask and we're going to set our color to zero and remove it. That leaves it smooth. But what I'm going to do is maybe copy my base leather. So control C and then go to this toe and heel and control V. And if it doesn't go in the thing, just drag it in there. And now we can get rid of this layer because we don't need it. And we're going to take our base layer here and maybe make it a Maybe adjust that base color some more and make it even darker if, if we can. So let's see, yeah, something like that. We don't want it all the way black, but we want it quite a bit darker than the rest of the boot here. Okay, and then we could also mess with the roughness. So if we want it to be, well, not roughness, sorry. Let's do the height. So click on base layer, click here. Go to levels and we want to mess with height so we just want to maybe make it a little smooth we don't want to completely get rid of the the um yeah I use my regular mouse here we don't want to completely get rid of the texture but well, let's make it a little bit something like that maybe a tiny bit more Okay, something like that. And then come here and mess with the roughness and make it a little bit shinier. Now, obviously, if you overdo it, it's going to be crazy. But you want to give it a little bit more shine than the rest of the shoe. Now, how much that is, is it's, it's all a matter of personal taste. You know, something like that. And it looks, it looks kind of more shinier back here. All right, maybe not so shiny. Let's drop it down a little bit more. So maybe something like that. I don't know. I go back and forth. So, you know, figure out one that works for you. See, the height here is a, it seems a little... Oh, let's get out of this shoe. Seems a little crazy. Then in the front, so let's use the, the uh, back here to drop the height down quite a bit. Now it's not going to, oh, you know why? That's because it's still getting the height from the this leather here. So again, I'm going to go here, hit four, make sure I'm on, on zero, black, and Make sure we click the right one. There we go. Remove that one there. So that when we come back up to toe and heel and go in the base leather, now we're not nearly as textured. Okay, so there is that. And then we'll do the same thing here that we did before. We're just going to select this layer, Control D. Take the copy, and we'll, again, we'll call this worn leather. And again, base color. We're going to adjust. Let's see what I got to adjust here to brighten this a little bit. Brighten it 
so it's a more sort of reddish as compared to this one and that's just my preference to um, distinguish between the two and then take the roughness and here we want we want it to be pretty matte so drop that roughness and then get this oh, what happened to my did I not change this I think I might have hit undo so worn leather and we're gonna put a black mask on here so that's gonna go away and we're gonna put a actually we're gonna come here to smart mask again um, let's try something different here so edges scratched now, that's a lot of scratching but let's try it and see and I'm gonna get out of that mode so I can see better so that's kind of interesting All right so it's it's a little bit different and we've got some nice wear and tear this here looks a little too uniform so again select this and I'm gonna add a paint layer so I can paint this myself um, you know let me let me adjust this base color a little bit more I don't want it to be too bright something like that maybe so let's come in here go on the paint layer and shrink down our brush here and what are we at here so let's increase the flow I'm gonna hit X to reverse it and maybe make this a little bit bigger so I just need to break as a very sort of straight ish line there that I want to break up here a little bit so oops so again shift just to check in the lighting here so that's the shift and the right mouse button drag so let's just let's just put some of this back in here so it looks a little weird Okay, let's uh, zoom out. And just fill this in a little bit. Just on the edges here. And then of course, if you want to sort of scuff away this leather here, uh, just hit X and start to just in here just beat it up a little bit I don't take away too much but there you go um, let's go back here and I'm gonna hit X and let's start to maybe put back some of this again it just looks a little fake in here uh, let's adjust that flow Okay, I'm going to hit X, I'm going to drop my flow, and just start to maybe wear away some of the inner parts here. Okay, um, maybe get some of those subtle scratches, drag them in here as well. Um, set that to, what did I do before? Uh, not multiply overlay maybe you know you can you can mess with them and see what you like and let's maybe drop this down a little bit let me zoom out hmm. it's kind of uh, yeah it's still there you know what no I'm gonna get rid of this one and the sharpen okay a little trial and error kind of what I do 
Okay, so we're off to a pretty good start here. Let's uh, I'm gonna save quick. And it's gonna, it's gonna take a minute to save here just because it is saving uh, six 4K images. So let's render that and see. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. You know, I think though I'm getting the inverse effect of what I want. This is more shiny than this, and I kind of want it the other way. So let me go ahead. Yep, that's kind of what I'm getting here. This should be more shiny, I think. So let's go to the base leather way back down here. And let's get our roughness. And which way is decrease? Oh, that way. So I'm going to drop this down. I still want to have some shine there. But I'm going to drop it down there. And come all the way up to this base leather. And adjust its roughness. And let's see. Let's make it even shinier. So something like that. So now it's got more shine to it. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. Okay. Now, I think just color-wise, I can still mess with it a little bit as well. Maybe make it darker. Definitely want to make it lighter, but you yeah. Let's just take it all the way to black and see what happens. Yeah. It's not going to go be 100% black, but it's pretty dark, which is which I like. Okay, so <clears throat> that is that part. Then Let's keep trying to sweeten this a little bit here. So let's let's add a layer of dirt. So let's go back to just the original leather here. And inside of there, I'll share a little trick that I like to use here. Um, if we come to materials, come here, there's this rust coarse. And yeah, it looks like rust, but it actually works really well as just dirt. So I'm going to grab that and put that above the worn leather. Okay, so it's just going to cover that shoe and that weird rust. But I'm going to mask it. So come over here, add black mask, and then I'm going to add a generator. So we talked about gen generators before. Um, right here says generator. There's no generator selected. So if I click on it and come to dirt click on dirt what it's going to do and again with dirt selected i can reduce the amount of dirt it's going to stick that rust texture in the crevices so if we just so if we turn this on and off you'll see how there's this dirt in there right now it might be a little too bright because if you look at right there, it might be a little too bright if I go back and forth here. So we can just select this and maybe just let's drop the value down a little bit. Maybe mess with the saturation a little bit. Let's. Okay, so is this going to stick some dirt in the nooks and crannies? To me, that just adds a adds a little something in there. And of course, if you want it, you can go in the generator and mess with it. And increase it or decrease it. That's up to you. Let's check it. 
All right, I think we're just too saturated now, so let's, let's drop our saturation a little bit. Okay. Maybe not so much. Yeah, why not? Uh, so let's go with that. Okay, so now let's let's play with the with the cloth part a little bit here. Um, this part here. So we have our fabric in there, right now it's all very even and very uniform. So let's try to break it up a little bit. Um, I want to make a new fill layer right here. I'm going to make the color sort of really dark gray. I'm going to... I don't think I need any, well, I definitely don't need any metallic. My roughness, I'm going to set pretty high here. I don't want any shine to it. And let's take this even further dark. Something like that. Okay. And let's add a black mask. And let's go to smart masks. And I don't know. Let's see what we got. Dirt splashes. Let's try that. Okay, now if you look real close, you can see right in here that, that black color. So if I turn this on and off, you can see it coming in. It's, it's kind of hard to see there. So all I'm doing here is just trying to break up the, the sort of uniformity of that color you know what and i think i like it better without that one um so you can see some of that in there you can also add other things so i don't know sand dust yeah that one's not so interesting so i found that even though these are named a certain way like sand dust or you know rust or something like that I find that sometimes they work in, in other instances as well. So let's try this dust soft. So if we turn that on and off. Yeah, it's just... Let's multiply this guy. Yeah, I don't, nothing's really going on there. Um, dirt dusty. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so these are all pretty subtle. Let's turn up the tiling. Oops. So turn it up to five and let's see. Hmm. So sometimes they do quite a bit, sometimes they don't. Okay, so let's um Let's let's do the the dirt thing that we did before materials. Rust coarse. Let's put that there. Give it a sec. It's starting to get heavy. The more stuff I add, the heavier things get. So, all right. So black mask. Add a generator. Come here for dirt. And you can see how in the crevices we've got dirt. It's obviously too much. So. With the generator selected, just drop down the dirt level. And you can increase the grunge amount as well. Just to and drop your dirt level here. Okay, so turning it on and off, we just get some detail there. We can adjust this, maybe make it a little bit darker. You know, if we made it black, I don't think that'll work. Let's try just somewhere in here and turn it on and off and see. Okay, so it's pretty subtle detail, but it's there. Okay, I'm going to hit C just to look at uh, my channel. So this is my roughness channel. You can see this is darker because it's shinier. Okay, and the parts that are really light really are not very shiny at all. This is sort of mid-level shininess here. 
if I hit C again, metallic, there's no metal. So nothing there. The normal, the normal in height. And this is the mask for this layer. And then this is the base color. So base color or albedo oops, is basically just the color without any other lighting and stuff in there. So you can see some of that dirt that I'm putting in the shoe there. Okay. And height and back to roughness to get out of that. Just hit M for material. Okay. So I think we're looking pretty good. All right. So um, that's that's the start to this to the upper part of the shoe here. We're getting pretty nice results. I'm going to save real quick. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of, lot of uh, work yet to do. We need to get all the stitching and stuff uh, figured out as well. And I think that'll add that, that level of realism um, that's going to really benefit us here. Um, so I think I'm going to stop the video here. And we'll pick up in the next video save again and go from there so i hope you guys are enjoying this video series i know it's taken a long time to do but we're getting there um if you're new please uh like comment and subscribe to the channel so we can grow the channel um and uh yeah i will see you guys at the next video